Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship as we come to worship a live and a living God. We're so pleased to have you this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning, first Sunday in, uh, of the month of April. And we're going to ask Sister Rosalind Turnipseed to bring you in with a wonderful welcome as we go into worship and praise of our Heavenly Father. Good morning and welcome again to New Beginnings House of Worship. It is such a pleasure to welcome you here and we just want to thank you so much for joining us once again this week. It is a beautiful sunny morning here in Nashville and I pray that God is spreading some light on your life this morning. Thank you for joining us. As I said, we want to keep you um, in prayer this week and just Remind you to keep everyone in prayer, our nation, your relatives, just keep everyone, friends, in prayer this week. For the Lord is for sure, has a blessing for us all. Be blessed and have a beautiful Sunday. Amen. Amen. So we thank you again for being here with us. We want to uh, extend the birthday wishes to our birthday wishes to our nephews, Jermaine and Jamal Blanchard as they just celebrated their birthday on yesterday. And all of you that have celebrated <clears throat> birthdays for them and anniversaries in the month of April. We also want to give a special shout out to our granddaughter, Anaya Turnipseed. Uh, she was designated as the IBDP Student of the Month. That's the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And says she was recognized for demonstrating the qualities of a principled learner. And so hopefully that's not, yeah, there we go. Uh, but Miss Anaya Turnipseed at East Magnet High School here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are uh, extremely excited for her and want to wish her and all of those in our school systems that are striving for excellence <clears throat> that they will do well. And those that find difficulties along the way. Uh, we sometimes forget about those students who have some struggles uh, we all have struggled in something. We want to support and lift them up and let them know that they too are worthy in God's sight. God bless you. God bless you. We are here this morning to worship and praise alive and the living God. And so we want you to get your Bibles out as we prepare to get into this message this morning. I'll be reading from the King James Version, but whatever version of the Bible you have, just have that and go along with us. We're going to be coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 21, 18 through 20. And if you don't have your Bible with you, we'll have that on the screen for you uh, to follow along. And the Word of God says this. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Amen. And so for a thought today, we just want to leave with you in this message. Are you prepared to meet Jesus, are you prepared to meet Jesus? And so as we go through this message today, we always like to leave you with a biblical truth, which is a false sense of readiness, a false appearance of righteousness can be deadly. A false sense of righteousness and even a false appearance of righteousness can be deadly. Watch yourself. Scripture tells us to make our calling and election sure. Be sure that you know that you know that you are uh, saved, that you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're following his precepts. You have been forgiven, but don't think that you can get away with doing whatever you want in any manner you want, and still make it into glory. A false appearance of righteousness can be deadly. When we think about our lives today, 
and things that we go through and we deal with, uh, we want to be right. I don't think there's anybody out there that really want to be wrong, that he really want to do wrong things just because wrong things are there. Now, there are those who, yes, they do wrong things and they seem to enjoy it. But in, in the scope of things, in their realm, in their consciousness, they think they are right to do what they're doing. Everybody has some idea of wanting to be right. Everybody, pretty much, uh, we really want to do the right thing. Most people want to do the right thing. And so whatever your uh, political background, no matter what your religious affiliation, no matter what your cultural uh, background is, your race, creed, or color, your gender, no matter what, you want to do what's right based on what you believe to be right. And so that's where everything come in. Uh, but, but see, here's the thing. Because the world wants, us, uh, to, wants to deceive us, we are chasing after that which is wrong. As a matter of fact, we're chasing after, sometimes we're chasing after everything that's wrong in life. Because we're not really focused on what the Word of God has to say about a matter in our life. You know, we, we were talking yesterday uh, in our moment in the Word and uh, talking about prayer in our life. And we know that sometimes, uh, a lot of times when people are going through and you ask somebody something, what should I do? And uh, the first thing you may hear out of a Christian's mouth is to pray. Or someone who believe in God is that they should you should pray about it. And a lot of times people get frustrated with that because, okay, I, I, I hear that. I've been praying, but what else can I do? And we want to rush into this thing and, and do it. Uh, we want some solutions right now that we don't take that time to really communicate with God and find out what's going on and expressing to him what is uh, on our heart and what's going on in our lives. And so we, we end up chasing after those things that are wrong because the world will show us something right away and give us a solution to a problem right away. And a solution that really isn't a solution is just something that you can do that the world will say, you are right in doing that because of your situation. You were right to go out and take some food from such and such a place because you were hungry and the system is... is against you and there's no real stores in your neighborhood and, and all of these other reasons of why you should be able to go and steal some food to feed your family or to tell somebody something because they hurt your feelings. We sometimes have that appearance of righteousness doing something that we believe is right and just when truly God says no. Are you prepared to meet Jesus when he comes? Are you prepared to meet Jesus when he comes? Does that lifestyle, does that attitude of life prepare you to meet Jesus when he comes? Well, in this morning's message, we want to dive into this message and see this, this story about this big tree that was full of leaves but didn't have any fruit on it. So the first thing that we notice in verse 18, it says, now in the morning, as he returned into the city. On last week, we dealt with Jesus cleansing the temple. And then he left there and went to Bethany. And that's where he uh, would sometimes go because Jesus didn't have a home of his own. Remember, his family didn't believe in him. Uh, his brothers and sisters definitely didn't believe in, in him, calling himself the Messiah, the Christ. And they just didn't accept him. So Jesus didn't have his own home. And most of the time, he would spend that time with friends that he met along the way. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus was one of the homes in Bethany that he would spend time at. And so it says, now in the morning. And, and so Jesus got up. And this really, in this text, it's talking about Jesus getting up really at what the Jewish calendar or the time frame would say, the last of the nighttime moving into the daytime. Uh, that last watch of the night, just before morning starts to hit, just at that point that Jesus got up and went out. And so uh, Jesus comes to us early and, and he comes to us often. And are we really ready 
when Jesus comes? Are you prepared to meet Jesus when he comes? We think Jesus, we have enough time and we think Jesus is going to operate on our schedule. When we get our life together, then Jesus will come and, and, and make things right for us. No, we don't know the day or the hour when he will return. And for some of us, he's meeting us daily. <clears throat> for all of us, he meets us daily right where we are, expecting some things from us. But what do we do? We show up as a fig tree full of leaves, but no fruit. We're not going to get too far ahead of us. Jesus came early in the morning and he found this fig tree. It says now in the morning, as he returned into the city, <coughs> excuse me, as he returned into the city, he hungered. So Jesus was hungry. Uh, it wasn't like he was starving to death, but he was hungry. He got up early in the morning. He started on his way into the city, and he, he felt hungry along the way. And so Jesus had expectations when he looked and saw a fig tree. And so think about our own lives. When we get up and go about our business and to do the things, Jesus is, is expecting some things out of us. And sometimes we do those things that aren't right. And we get up in the morning and go on our job and we get on our way there. There's somebody who cuts us off in traffic. And how do we behave? What sort of fruit do we bear at that moment? Or we enter into the office and then that same person who's always saying this, that, or the other, telling this kind of joke or saying this about you, they are, there they are again, running their mouth. And so what sort of fruit are you bearing? Or it's tax season and you're looking for a way around some things to get some more money. Uh, what fruit are you bearing? In your neighborhood, in your homes, we can go on and on. And so all of these situations that we face, sometimes we have a reason and we say, well, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> That's not an excuse. You should be bearing fruit at all times, no matter what situation comes about in your life. It says that he came to it. And here's the other thing that we really want you to think about in your life. No matter what you're going through and what you're dealing with, Jesus is always coming to us, beckoning us to give our life and surrender our life to him that we may have eternal life. There's no reason for you to go to jail when you have a lawyer by your side bailing you out and saying you have, uh, you are innocent uh, you're not guilty, and by that you become innocent if you accept Jesus Christ. Just accept these terms and come with us. But what do we do? We go right on and do those things that we aren't supposed to do and end up in jail. And so that's what life is about, salvation. Are you gonna really wanting eternal life, or do you want eternal damnation? And so Jesus comes to us, and, and, and he beckons us. Now, there are there's some people who believe that if you're a sinner— <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit doesn't come to us and speak to us or that Jesus doesn't talk to us. Well, that's if that was the case, none of us would be saved. We can't do this on our own. We don't have in, our, in ourselves to want to do the right thing. The Holy Spirit is always calling on us through the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the act that he performed. He is The Holy Spirit is calling on us to come and accept Christ. And so he comes to us. Sometimes he comes to us early in the morning, just before the crack of dawn, when we're just getting up. And what do we do in the morning? Do we thank God for all the things he's done? Do we thank him for allowing us to rise this day? Do we thank him for the purposes and plans he has for us that we don't even quite understand yet, but he's working those things out in our lives? But see, if you have a prayer life, and if you're communicating with God and asking him, he's revealing things to, to us daily and, and throughout the day and throughout the, the, the week. But we have to go to God in prayer to understand what he has for us. He came early. He came to them and found nothing thereon but leaves only. Now, you say, well, is that really something wrong with that? Shouldn't trees have leaves on them? Does a tree, does this fig tree uh, supposed to have fruit on it all the time? Well, here's the thing about fig trees. And so as we, we studied this and, and looked 
at some of the things that were discussed about these fig trees. Fig trees would typically start to bud with the fruit first. And then they'll start to, as the leaves develop, then it will nourish the fruit and give the fruit all it needs. And so they typically have two times a year, and I think it's something like June and in August that a new crop of fruit will start to, to show up. And so in these times, uh, it, it is not uh, unheard of that the trees pretty much have fruit on it all year long and even can go through the winter sometimes with still with fruit on it because as that one fruit uh, is removed or as it ripens and falls off, then another bud will, will appear in that spot. And so the fig tree was expected to have some fruit on it. <clears throat> it may not have always been uh, the best of fruit, uh, because as the fruit develop and the sugars uh, are nourished into the plant through the leaves, if we go back to photosynthesis, my biology students, if you go back and understand that process is producing the sugars that are needed for the tree and so also for the fruit. And so Jesus had an expectation that there should be something, some fruit on that tree. And that is the way it is in our lives. When Jesus comes to us, he expects us as Christians, those who have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, those who have uh, want to be right, those of us that declare ourselves righteous. And we can declare ourselves righteous when we're following the concepts and precepts of Jesus Christ. But woe unto you who think you're righteous, have that appearance of righteousness. You wear the right kind of clothing. You have the right kind of job that says you have you are prosperous. You have gone to the right kind of school. You live in the right kind of neighborhood. Your children go to the right kind of schools. And you have all these things going on for you. You have a spouse, children, and, and, and success in your life. And you have that appearance of doing right. But you're not bearing any fruit. And so Jesus came to this tree and found that it had no fruit on it. But it was full of leaves. The leaves would signify that it is it is going through the process to bear the, the fruit or to, to nourish the fruit and give it what it needs. And so what's going on in our lives? The Holy Spirit is there always giving us just what we need. The Holy Spirit knows our groanings, knows those things that we can't even announce or proclaim to God ourselves and that will interpret those things to God and, and lay them before our Lord and Savior that he will understand our needs. Sometimes there are things going on in your life that you just don't have words to express, Lord. I just need, I just need you right now. And we call on Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit are like those leaves that are nourishing, giving the tree everything it needs, giving us exactly what we need in our life but we ignore it and don't use it to bear fruit. And so what's going on in our lives? What, uh, what's, pro what's the problem with our fruit bearing? We don't love people like we should. We're not, we're not respectful of others. Uh, we don't walk in the spirit. Uh, we're walking uh, as in the precepts and concepts of what the world says, because the world tells us it's okay. Don't worry about this. You can't have fun being a Christian. Well, yes, you can. Jesus was always at the celebrations. And God has a celebration for us if we would only bear our souls to him and give our life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, so he came. And so there are three things that I want you to see, <clears throat> excuse me, in this text that he had, um, Jesus has expectations. We're going to see his expectations. We're going to see his disappointment and we're going to see his absolute power. We're going to see his expectations. We're going to see his disappointment. And we're going to see his absolute power. We've already been gotten into that. I was getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, so as we look at this text, his expectation is that we would always be bearing fruit. There should be good things coming from your life. God may not have given you a million dollars, but he gives you a hundred dollars on the regular and you never have empty pockets. It may be down to 20 this week. You may be back up to $120 the next week, but you have sufficient for the day. 
And so a lot of times we're looking at what other people have or, or wanting some things, but we're just like the, uh, we don't want to be like that fig tree that's there that's just full of leaves and have Jesus come by and find us wanting not bearing fruit. And so we, we, we need to make sure that we are meeting the expectations that God has for us. We have to have peace. We have to have wisdom. We need to have understanding. We need to have knowledge. How do we get those things? By reading the word of God, being prayerful, asking God for instruction, fellowshipping together. That's why it's so important to be in a Bible-believing church, that you have some way of getting the answers to life's questions that you have. Because we as preachers, we don't always preach the sermon that you need at that moment. I, I pray that what we are doing is helping you somewhere along the way. But there may be an issue that's in your life that you have questions about. And you should be able to reach out to your pastor. Reach out to the preacher. Reach out to the man or woman of God to get answers to those questions. And, and it doesn't have to only be on Sunday. It only have to always only be on Wednesday night or at Bible study, whenever your Bible study is. You should be able to reach out and get those answers. And so when we fellowship together, that's where we get a better understanding. When we pray and ask God, I still don't get it. I, they said this as we were together, but Lord Jesus, help me understand. And God will give you the understanding you need if you continue to read his word line upon line and precept upon precept. There are things that you can find in the word that may seem a little confusing. But if you study another passage of scripture that's related to that, you can see how and get a better understanding. You can see how God is really using that and how that concept comes together when we understand the, the fullness of things. Don't let people nitpick and pull things apart and say, well, it said this, so that's the way life is. No, study it line upon line and precept upon precept. His expectation is for us to always bear fruit. But then there's also his disappointments. When Jesus comes along and finds us without fruit, full of leaves, looking like we're righteous, looking like we're the tree that we're supposed to be, looking like we're going to really give an abundant crop and not being able to bear fruit. You know, sometimes you, you come along and you, uh, I, I plant flowers and things and, and it's, I get disappointed when I plant them and then sometimes the, the flowers don't come up this year. And I'm wondering, what, oh, what's going on? Sometimes it could do with the condition of the soil, the things that's going on with the plant. Or maybe there may be too much crowding with the bulbs in the ground. When they get overcrowded and the and new bulbs coming out, well then those new young bulbs need to be pulled out and separated. And it sometimes will cause the plant not to bring forth its flower. Uh, I was having some... Uh, concerns about some plants. So I had to go in and separate those bulbs and pull them out and put those bulbs someplace else. I didn't have anyone to give them to at the time. So I just planted them in new spots. And, and this year, uh, three flowers came up on all of those plants. I said, well, okay, it, it did some, some good. And sometimes that's where it is in our life. Uh, we get disappointed because uh, there's no uh, evidence that, it, that the flowers or the tree is bearing the things that it should bear. And so we get disappointed. And sometimes we'll just, we will root things up and throw them away and, and, and plant, plant something else in its place. But look what Jesus says to this tree as he's disappointed. When Jesus comes, are you prepared to meet Jesus when he comes? It says in this verse 19, And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it, Jesus will speak a word into your life. And don't allow yourself to believe that he's only going to speak words of blessings in our life when we're not doing what we should, should do. That's the problem in society today. We think that even when we're doing wrong, if we call out to the Lord, he's supposed to do right. Then we go back to doing wrong again. It says, and he said, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. Forever, you will not bear any fruit ever again. Why? Because you are, you had the opportunity. You were full of leaves. You had the spirit it there to help you. And now all of a sudden you're not bearing any 
leaves, uh, any fruit at all. You just have leaves. And this was really a prophecy about the nation of Israel because Israel was going about declaring itself to be the chosen people of God, which God did declare them to be. And they were chosen because God just selected them to be the ones that would be priests to the nations. God has his reason for doing what he does. But they took that and abused it, not following the precepts of God. And so now they were going to be like this tree that will not bear fruit anymore. Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. That's a dangerous thing. That's a deadly thing. Because when Jesus looks at our lives and see that we are not doing what he has asked us to do, he has given us chance after chance. You know, I've, I know some people who, have, <laughs> who can lose a job today and have another one tomorrow. And this was in a time when jobs were kind of scarce to come about. Uh, and they, they could lose a job this day, get a job tomorrow, and be working, and then they go out and do the same foolish things on their job and lose that job and go get another one. And then what would they say? Well, uh, so-and-so helped me get this job. Or I was able to do this because my this, that, or the other. No, it's because you were fortunate. The sun will shine on the just and the unjust, just like the rain will fall on the just and the unjust. Sometimes we have uh, things happen to us just because. It's not because uh, we don't, don't have the opportunity to do the right thing. Yes, we do. But sometimes we take advantage of that situation and think in ourselves that we are more than what we are. And then Jesus comes and says, because you're not bearing any fruit, I give you job after job and you don't even come to me, to me and ask for things. You're not even bearing fruit of love, joy, peace, and, and all of the fruit of the spirit that we are asked to walk in. And, and so we, we don't have any virtue in us. And Jesus is disappointed and speaks a word over us that we will never bear fruit again because you had that opportunity and you didn't. Now look what happened. Jesus says you won't bear fruit anymore. Jesus didn't say wither and die. But look what happens. When you don't take seriously what God has, has for us, when we turn to do that thing that we want to do, Romans talks about it in Romans chapter 1. He said, because the people were so evil and so wicked, they continued over and over. They, they act like they didn't know me, but even by the near presence of nature, man know that there is a God. But mankind continued to do that which was evil. And scripture says that he gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that they thought were good to, for themselves, but they weren't. And so this is what's happening here. Let no fruit go on, grow on thee henceforward forever. Because when I came to you to bring you in, to, 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 to find out your, uh, your nature, to reveal to you the person that you really are, I found no fruit on you at all. You had the appearance of righteousness, but there was no righteousness in you. And presently, the fig tree withered away. It happened immediately. And the disciples saw that. And this is bringing us to our last point, that Jesus has absolute power. The disciples were able to see that when Jesus spoke a word, that immediately the tree withered up. The tree didn't wither up because Jesus said, wither up and die. He said, you will not bear fruit anymore. So the natural thing for the tree to do, if it's nothing else it's going to do but bear leaves all of its life, was for it to just dry up and die. Because it had no purpose anymore. Do you have purpose in life? You can find purpose in life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Surrender your life. Stop trying to do the things that the world tells you it's okay to do. If you're struggling with an issue in your life, and we know that struggle, what struggle can be like. Sometimes you may be struggling with alcohol. Well, you can get rid of that, that habit. It may be a struggle. Some people can get rid of things in their life 
and this move right on, but sometimes there's a struggle that goes on because God is trying to show you how strong you truly are. That if you can, if you see yourself passing through this test, passing through this storm, passing through this valley of the shadow of death, and then you make it through to the other side, that you overcome that, that habit that you didn't think you could overcome, then you will know that God is with you and that you have the power if you only trust God for the things that, that he has before you. And that's what this story really is all about. It's not about the destruction so much. It is the consequence of things that happens when we don't uh, bear any fruit, when we reject what God offers to us. But when we accept it, and we have time after time in our life that opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we're extending to you right now that opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Stop being that tree that appears to be righteous. Stop trying to act like you are doing the right thing in life, that you are a just person and you are a loving person, you're a kind person, when you know in your own self, in your moments when the world isn't watching how you treat your family, in the world, when the world isn't there watching to see how you behave behind closed doors, those things that you do in your time, and those places you go, those things you do that you know that you should not do, and the, the acceptance of principles and of things that, that should be done based on what the world says, this is how you should do it. You know the song uh, by Montel Jordan, this is how we do it. And sometimes we have that attitude in our life that we're going to do it the way we do it and you have to accept it. And so stop doing those things. Stop allowing yourself to be abused by the deceiver because he doesn't want you to bear fruit. He wants you to have that appearance of a fig tree that has a, a bunch of leaves that everybody look at it from a distance and say, it must be something going on with that tree. But then when you get up and get a close look, when Jesus come to you, and, and, and look at your life and see that there's no fruit that you're bearing. It's a disaster to have an appearance of righteousness and have no fruit. And to have the Lord and Savior to say, you will no longer bear, have the opportunity to bear fruit. And you just wither up and you die. Don't allow the deceiver to convince you that the things that you gather in life on this side are the most important things. The most important thing that you can get on this side of life is salvation and redemption, which is only offered through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But at this time, we ask that if you are someone out there that don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, we ask that you would come and let us know right now and put it in your name in the chat and let us know that you want to give your life to the Lord. Uh, you may have some questions about what all this means. You want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, how, what, what are my next steps if I do this? Then put your name in the chat and we'll be in contact with you to let you know uh, what you can do. You may not be in Nashville, Tennessee, but you can still be a part of this ministry. But if you're looking for some place you can go that maybe you, you, you don't want to join this necessarily, then that's okay. The most important thing is that you give your life to Jesus right now. We'll help you find a place wherever you are. Uh, even if you're here in Nashville, uh, we're not so caught up in uh, numbers. Yes, we would love to have you here. We'd love to minister to your life and to help you find your way. Uh, but the main thing is that you find Jesus, that you can be a fruit-bearing tree and not a tree that's just full of leaves that will eventually wither up and die. If you don't want to put your name in the chat because you don't want to put your name out there, you can contact us at pastornewbeginningshow at gmail.com. That's pastornewbeginningshow at gmail.com. This information will be posted on the screen. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you can find that information there. Or you can just send, simply send me a text or leave me a message at 615-473-5464. 615-473-5464. And I will get back with you and help you uh, settle this situation in your life 
And even if you're out there, you've already given your life to the Lord and you want to make sure that you have get your life back together. You've, you've gone astray. We've all fought, gone astray before. And, but Jesus does not give up on us. And so if you want to get your life together, you can contact us as well. And so um, there's also the opportunity to give to this ministry. You can give to us at givelify.com. So right here on the screen, you can give to us at givelify.com uh, and look for our location. And you don't necessarily have to download the app. It would be good if you did, but you don't have to. You can just go to givelify.com and go to donate or give. And then look for our location at 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218, right here on the screen. Look for our location, New Beginnings House of Worship, uh, and it may be New Beginnings HOW. I forget. I think it's New Beginnings House of Worship, actually. And you can find our location at 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 7218. But if you're like me, uh, you don't you like to do much online, then you can just mail it to us at New Beginnings House of Worship at this address, 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218. And we thank you. So at this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for our communion. Uh, we forgot to inform you of that early enough that you can, if you have some juice uh, of some kind and a cracker or some bread, that you will be able to do that <clears throat> and, and gather that together and we will have communion together. Amen. Uh, any updates that we need? And so uh, if you would gather that together and we want to just encourage you as you're getting that, if you may be going to, to your cabinets to get that together, uh, we want to encourage you that um, we have our Bible study on Saturdays at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. We are looking at a facility. Uh, we have some options. Uh, we were looking at Tuesday, but we may do it on Thursday. My wife was, is working on t Tuesday night, so we may do that on Thursdays to have a Bible study, and we'll let you know that location where we can meet face-to-face -face as things with this pandemic seem to be going in the, the right direction. We still want to be cautious. We still don't want to take things for granted. We want to do some prudence and so we'll be informing you of some things there. We're also looking for a place to have in-person worship as well. Uh, so we'll be getting back to you on that. And we may not be there every Sunday, uh, but we will have some Sundays that we may have some in-person uh, worship. So as we come together now uh, in this communion service, we do this to show our remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the things that he has done for us. He has given his life as that perfect sacrifice that we will be redeemed, that we will have salvation and right standing before God. We will have the righteousness that we try to appear to have, uh, but we give to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so at this time, um, we... Remember what Jesus has done for us as his disciples, he and his disciples were gathered in the upper room. During that time period we call the Last Supper, he broke bread with them and said, broke the bread and blessed it and said, this is my body that was broken for sins. Take ye and eat. And likewise, he took the cup and blessed it and said, this represents my blood that will be shed for the remission of sin. Take and eat, drink. And as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. So this is what this is all about. And we're remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made, Calvary's cross, where he was hung Bled and died. His body was broken and his blood was shed for the remission of our sins. And so we thank you for being with us. We thank you and we hope that this message brought some uh, inspiration or something into your life uh, to help you along the way. If so, share it with your family and friends. Hit the like button as often as you can. Uh, we truly appreciate you being here with us and we encourage you 
to invite a friend to be with us next. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.